Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship with the digital mission of the Episcopal Church of New Hampshire. My name is Reverend Alana Van Antwerpen. It's a pleasure to welcome you all here today. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. It also happens to be Mother's Day. So all of those who are mothers or function as mothers, happy Mother's Day, remembering always um, all of the mothers that have gone before us. So this morning, just a few words before we begin worship together. Uh, serving with us today is the Right Reverend Bishop Rob Hirschfeld. Uh, he is our presider and preacher. Also, our lay reader is Mr. Joe Rose. So um, it's a pleasure to be serving alongside each of them today. Today's service format is an agape meal format, which means that after our scripture and preaching and prayers, we will share a simple meal together. So I invite you at this time, if you have not done so already, to grab some bread at home or some drink. Um, I myself have some materials here for our agape portion of our time together. As we move more deeply into prayer, I just invite you to center yourselves and um, invite Bishop Rob to begin and lead us in worship. Good morning, one and all. Um, good morning as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on the sixth Sunday of Eastertide. This is also the Sunday just before the Ascension, and it is, as Alana mentioned, as you know, Mother's Day. So we remember our mothers. We remember those who have served as mothers for us. We remember also those for whom um, their relationships with their mothers is, has been nurturing and strong and good and enduring, and those whose for whom the relationship of mother has been um, troubled and uh, fraught. And we, we pray that we remember how God, God uh, is God's self, a mother to us. And, and with that, I'm going to invite you to, to light a candle as it, it is Eastertide. I'm going to light the Paschal candle. And then this isn't on our script, but I'm going to um, read a portion of a song of, of um, Song of True Motherhood from the 15th century monastic anchorite Julian of Norwich. And then we'll begin our worship. So if you have a candle and you can light it, now would be a good time to do that. Julian wrote, God chose to be our mother in all things, and so made the foundation of his work most humbly and most pure in the virgin's womb. God, the perfect wisdom of all, arrayed himself in this humble place. Christ came in our poor flesh to share a mother's care. Our mothers bear, bear us for pain and for death. Our true mother, Jesus, bears us for joy and endless life. Christ carried us within him in love and travail until the full time of his passion. And when all was completed and he had carried us so for joy, still all this could not satisfy the power of his wonderful love. All that we owe is redeemed in truly loving God for the love of Christ works in us. 
On this day, the Lord has acted. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. I'm going to hear a hymn. Now the green blade riseth from the buried frame. Weep that in dark earth many days hath lain. Love lives again that with the dead hath been. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. be with you and also with you let us pray oh god you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding pour into our hearts such love towards you that we loving you in all things and above all things may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone imagine withholding the water of baptism or baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. 
With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Our second reading today is a reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the spirit is the one that testifies for the spirit is the truth. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. <clears throat> this morning's reading from the Holy Gospel is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus said, As God the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. 
In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. That's a word I think we only hear in church. Abide. It's not a word that we usually um, uh, say in work or business or anywhere really, but church, I think. It's kind of a churchy word. And I want to try to recover that and, and see what, what abiding means, what, what it means for us to abide. Um, it's connected to this other word, which is repeated throughout the readings, especially I was listening to the psalm as though for the first time today. How many times in Psalm 98 the word joy appears? Rejoice. Um, the rivers themselves clap their hands. The hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. Joy, joy and abiding. What is the relationship between our abiding in God and our finding joy? You may know this, but I serve on these school boards, the White Mountain School and the Holderness School, and I've, I sometimes dip my toe into the rivers of educational theory and understanding of what happens in teaching, pedagogy, and, and um, school leadership. And this word comes up a lot, uh, resilience, um, grit, that we're trying to instill in young people a sense of resilience, a kind of ability to withstand the ups and downs of life, the challenges, the failures, the disappointments, and, and the times of great elation and success. How do, how do we um, help young people, and I would say ourselves, um, be resilient, to hang in there? That's, that's part of the, the meaning of the word abide, I think. To abide is to remain, to dwell in. Abide and abode are similar words. They come from the same root. Um, Jesus asks us to abide in his love for us and God's love for, for him. And as he abides and dwells in the love of God the Father, so we are called to abide, to dwell in, to stay in to hang in there with God's love. And this, he says, is so that our joy, we may have joy. We'll have the joy of Jesus and that our joy may be complete, may be full. Um, we just would be um, surrounded and, and just full of, full of joy. I don't know about you, but I would say it's, it's probably safe to say that right now in our culture, in our world, um, there's, I wouldn't say there's an absence of joy, but it does feel like a relatively joyless time that we live in. If you turn on the news or you read the newspaper, um, it's not exactly a source of joy to see what's happening in the world. Um, it could be, therefore, that we might ask, what do you want from us, Jesus? Why would you want us to be joyful considering all the things that we're struggling with right now? We're not with you in person yet. It's coming. It's coming really soon. Many of our congregations are starting to, to come together and experience the joy of Eucharist, uh, actually having it in person. And then we're beginning very soon to even come back inside. Um, that would be a joyful thing, but, but still we're struggling with the, the uh, coming out of the woods of these, this dark forest of COVID, all the conversations that we're having around inequity and racial inequity and racial justice and injustice, the disparities between us. I don't need to go into the long litany of the, the ills of the world, do I? We, we all know that. Jesus asks us in spite of that, notwithstanding, to say Alleluia anyway, Alleluia anyhow, uh, Alleluia nevertheless, Alleluia. Joy is something different, qualitatively different than mere happiness. I want to share with you, if I can, something I can't do when, if I were in a, in a pulpit, I'm going to screen share 
um, something that I was shown this, this week. It's called a hedometer. Um, and what this does, can you see that? I think you can. Um, this is a graph. This is a graph that uh, using artificial intelligence, they, they go on Twitter, you know, that social media platform, and they, the computer somehow scores uh, the relative happiness of a large range of the population based on tweets. We know all about tweets, right? And whether they're positive or negative, happy or sad, and it places those those that tweeting this the, the tweets on a graph a timeline so this goes back to 2020 and you see a lot of ups and downs a lot of ups and downs um uh, christmas day back in 20 2020 was a high point um 20 uh and 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 then most recently and i mean 2019 was a high point easter thanks thanksgiving and and uh and Christmas of 2020, that's one of the high points of this where people are greeting each other a lot on Twitter. The lower points, these troughs have to do with, you know, the, one of them is the death of Kobe Bryant. There was a missile attack in Iran, uh, the murder of George Floyd. These are troughs, uh, shootings of protesters in Nigeria, protests in Wisconsin. Um, uh, there was an election day, it went up a little bit, then it goes down. You get it. Um, this is a measure of happiness. And I, and I'm going to shut this off now. Um, I think, you know, that that is kind of how we work. We, we see our happiness, our faithfulness, maybe we it's maybe it's a mistake to see the fruits of our happiness. Um, being a reflection of our faith. I think Jesus is saying that joy and happiness are two different things. Happiness and the word happenstance or happening are the same word. If we, if we uh, identify our spiritual well-being based on certain events, I think we're always going to be on this scale of up and down and up and down it's going to be very tiring and exhausting for us. And I can tell, I know I'm tired that way. Um, you just feel like you're on a, a kind of whipsaw going up and down like that. It's worth remembering that when Jesus talks about joy, this passage that we just heard in the Gospel of John takes place in a particular setting. It's at the Last Supper. Jesus is saying, abide with me, and I will abide with you, and do this in order to experience joy. He's saying that on the night before he's going to be crucified. It's just moments away that Judas will betray him, and, and Peter will deny him, and the other disciples will abandon him. And he will be experiencing tremendous suffering and pain, physical pain, and even death. Isn't it curious for us and somehow helpful and hopeful for us that it's at that moment, at that moment that he says, my joy will abide in you. My joy will be complete in you. So joy is something else of a different order than mere happiness. I'm not saying um, that it's not good to be happy. I'm not saying I wish people were more happy. But I, I think as Christians, as Christians now, especially in this very turbulent up and down time, we're called to a different order, a different way of being, a different way of walking through this wilderness world. We're called to be joyful. If Christians do not exude or somehow demonstrate that resilient, abiding joy, then why would anyone be attracted to us? Why would anyone want to come to our churches? Why would, why would anyone through us want to come and follow and be a disciple of Jesus? I say this 
as somebody who is not always joyful, uh, my family will tell you sometimes, and even people around the office, they often make jokes about, oh, the bishops in the office, you know how we can tell? Because of the sighing. <laughs> he sighs a lot. I sigh a lot. And yet in my size, I think I want to say, I'm going to speak um, in my defense. There's still, there's still a joy. There's still a sense of, of delight and trust that God is doing something powerful among us. God is doing something good among us, even in this time of exile, in this time of not being close, in this time of learning again how to trust in this love, this resilient, gritty, death-defying love. I have behind me this image of Jesus. It's called the harrowing of hell. Jesus is going down into the nether places and there taking by the wrist so that he has a good grip, even those sinners who have gone before us and pulling them out from Hades. That's an Easter image. And I believe that that's the abiding steadfast love that God is constantly drawing out of our suffering, out of our sighing into, into the lightness of his joy. It's probably important to, to connect this with the theme of motherhood, good motherhood. My own mother withstood my running away a couple times. Uh, my wandering, um, she waited patiently for me to return. Um, you know, I'm sure I caused my mother great suffering, great anguish. Um, and yet somehow, uh, somehow she hung in there with me. I think that gave me a reflection, just a, a hint of what God's love for me could be. So I want to cl close with a, a very brief poem. You've probably heard me uh, uh, share this poem before. It's a very short poem. It's by the, uh, the Vermont poet Galway Cannell, who expresses this kind of uh, yearning for God's joy, for abiding. It's simply called prayer. And it goes, whatever happens, Whatever what is, is, is what I want. Only that, but that. Whatever happens, whatever what is, is, is what I want. Only that, but that. May we find God's resilient, enduring, abiding love in us. May we seek that whom are the, the deepest places of our soul desires above all things. And may our joy, our deep joy in God be manifest in us that others may be drawn into the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. Now we have a hymn, Christ is Alive. Let Christians sing.
Let us say together the creed of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, they will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, as we lead into the prayers, I invite you to, if you'd like to type your prayer requests or thanksgivings into the chat function of, uh, of Zoom, I will like to give voice to them and to um, lift up our prayers into the heavenly places. Save your people, O Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Now, go to our chat. I'd like to ask your prayers for the repose of the soul of our friend, Pete Cross, who died last week. He's a friend of this diocese. We pray for Charlotte, who survives him. We pray for all the people of India in this time of terrible need as there's such waves of deaths as a result of COVID. We pray for the people of Afghanistan, especially those who are most vulnerable women and girls during this fraught, difficult time. We have prayers for the blessed memory of Tom who struggled and who gave joy to many. We pray for all who suffer from any kind of mental illness, whose mental illness may deprive them of a capacity to experience joy. And we pray that, that God's light and presence and strength may sustain and give them hope. Give thanks for all of us here present, gathered on this medium, and those who may be worshiping with us um, when this is posted on YouTube. Give thanks for Joe and Alana for helping, helping us this morning worship. We pray for all mothers, for mothers-to-be, for those whom we know are expecting now. And pray for all families and all those who are charged with the raising of, of children. We pray that we may be given guidance as we begin to return to in-person worship, both outdoors and indoors in the coming weeks. Pray that this may be done safely and that our first experiences for many of, of Eucharist may be nothing 
but joyful. In all these prayers and praises, we lift into your, your presence, O Lord, who is always and everywhere present and who loves us as a good mother. Amen. Alana, you may have some announcements. Indeed, I do have some announcements, Bishop. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the digital mission of the Episcopal Church of New Hampshire, uh, again, welcome to our service today. As we enter this next portion of our service together, we will be celebrating an agape meal. So if you were joining us belatedly, I invite you to get up from your seat in your house and maybe some grab some bread or crackers or some juice or drink for that portion of our service. This coming week, the Digital Mission will be offering its first digital dialogue forum. This first uh, gathering to talk about issues of the day will be a collaboration with the Reconciliation Commission of the Church of New Hampshire. The title of the time together is Same Place, Distinct Worlds. It's a conversation about race uh, with Bishop Rob Hirschfeld and Mr. James McKim, who is the president of the double NAACP chapter in Manchester. So we wanted to take this opportunity as we embark on this conversation around reconciliation um, in terms of racial reparations to really model what a difficult conversation around race might look like. Um, the registration can be found by going to the diocesan website or the digital mission Facebook page. Also, I wanted to mention that there are several uh, book groups gathering um, around the diocese to uh, read The Church Cracked Open, written by the Reverend Canon Stephanie Spellers. So there are about seven of these book groups that are forming. The information about signing up for that is both on the diocesan uh, Facebook page and website. Um, the Reverend, Can um, rather, Canon Tina Pickering is the contact for that if you're looking for more information. Um, Bishop, are there any other announcements you wanted to make sure that we share today? I can't think of any, except I hope that we all can uh, step outside today if, if you're able and experience just the, the gorgeous, the beauty, the beauty of this day. Um, it's really splendid, splendid May day here in New Hampshire. Indeed. Thank you, Alana. Thank you for the for leading us in the digital mission. You are welcome. And um, at this time, I invite us to move into the next portion of our service. Thank you. As we prepare for our agape meal together, let us read this reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. <clears throat> to take some bread and offer this prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, creator of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and the body of your Son. Feed us now with your presence among us and your presence in your word. As grain scattered upon the earth is gathered into one loaf, 
So gather your church in every place into the kingdom of your beloved Son. To you be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. And our drink. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, creator of the universe. You create the fruit of the vine and you refresh us with the cup of salvation in the blood of Jesus Christ, crucified yet risen. May the time come quickly when we can share that come again, even as you are with us now in our very thirst for you. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, when two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. Thanks be to, Thanks God. Be to God. Let us share our, our meal. As we are gathered and we are gathered with God who promises to be with us whenever we gather, I just want to share, there are two more prayers that came in, one um, from Valerie for guidance and support in her new ministry. And we pray for Johanna Young in her care and who we join with her in giving thanks for all nurses on this National Nurses Week. And we pray for all those who are studying the, the arts of healing. Let us share our meal together. Amen. Blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah, and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit who, bro who broods over the world as a loving mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you and abide with you always. Amen. Let us, would you like to dismiss us, Joe? Certainly, Bishop. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.
Thank you, everyone. We will see you on Tuesday. God bless.